Hello, welcome to a brief video on dealing with the setup screen in ProLedger Online. In this video, we're going to go item by item through the setup screen and you're going to learn how to set up categories and subcategories properly. You're going to learn to deal with accounts, edit account names, create accounts. We're going to deal with taxes in the setup screen. We're going to deal with the idea of classes and also with descriptions and pre-written descriptions. And in all of this, you're going to learn how to set things up, make changes, and also automate your bookkeeping entry system so that you're going to save time and energy when you do your bookkeeping. Okay, here we are in a bookkeeping file that we've already created. And even if you're creating a new file from scratch, you can still use the setup screen items to make adjustments. So let's go to the setup screen on the left side. You can click on it there. And this is where we're going to spend our attention. On the left side, you're going to see all these different tabs to go through different areas of setup. And we're just going to guide you through step by step. And top to bottom works quite well here. And we'll start at the top item. So under general, we're going to have the ability to create a business name. And whatever name you put on this spot is what's going to show up at the top of your reports. So have something that would look good in terms of your reports when you print them out. The next thing is, and you can change this at any time. The other thing you can do is change the date format. So if you'd rather have the dates appearing as month, day, year, or day, month, year, you can select that. And you can make this change at any time as well uh, after the bookkeeping is created. And also you can create and choose the first month of your financial year. So for example, if the first month of your financial year starts March the 1st, then choose March. And then you save your settings to save this. And if you've changed the, the month to March, then watch what happens on the dashboard. The first month that's displayed here is March and it ends at the end of February in this particular dashboard screen. And these, this would reflect the financial year that you set up in the setup screen. So let's go back to January and we'll just say our financial years from January to December. All right, so we've done that area in general. Let's go down to accounts. Now in accounts, you're gonna notice all the different ways you can set up your bank accounts and also your credit cards. And you also notice at the bottom, you have payable and receivable. Now you cannot edit payable and receivable. The only thing you could do is put in an opening balance so that if you're starting up with the cloud account, rather than manually entering all the previous entries, you could take whatever balance you have in your payables to start off with, and then just be able to carry that forward. So the same is with receivables. Now it comes to the other accounts, you can change the name or the spelling, uh, and you can do this anytime during the financial year. And you can also create an opening balance here as well, in case you're starting from you know, starting something with a balance in it. Now you can also delete something. So if I don't have a MasterCard, I can go up and choose the trash can and you can delete it. Now keep in mind, if you're trying to delete an account name during the financial year, or when you have bookkeeping entries, if there's entries associated with that particular account, it won't let you delete it. So for example, if I have Visa entries already, it says cannot delete this account because there's associated records, right? So that means I'd have to go back and look at my uh, visa entries here and edit them and choose a different account than visa. And once I've done that um, with all the entries that have visa on them, I could go back to setup and actually delete that account name. However, at any time I can actually rename, you know, um, the, the account name. And that has, if I want to put, let's say, a visa number in there or something, you can choose save and that works. And actually it'll update. You see everywhere there that used to say visa and now gives you the visa with the new name, for example. So that's how you can deal with accounts and you can add new accounts at any time and uh, edit the names as we mentioned. So next item is classes. Now, depending on the version of the Ledger program that you're subscribing to, this might appear slightly differently. For example, if you have the basic 
version of the program, if that's what you're subscribing to, then you're going to see three items here, general, split, and personal. Now, I've created a, a bookkeeping file for real estate agents. So it, it, by default, this name is general agent. But if you have a bookkeeping file type called small business or freelancer, then it, this might say something slightly different. But anyway, it's going to be a business class. There's going to be a personal class because this program does allow you to track all your personal and business expenses and income if you would like. Um, but there's also split. And with the split class, that means that you know, when you choose split class on an entry, it's going to split the entry between personal and business at the ratio that you've set up in this expense setup area. So for example, if I have a gas and oil receipt and I make an entry in the setup screen, I can choose if it's going to be 60% business and 40% personal, or let's say I think, hey, I think my ratio is going to be more like 80 20 then just change the number and then when the you do a bookkeeping entry and if you're going to choose the split class as part of the entry you know under account or sorry under class i should say then if you use that then it does the math and it splits the entry out for you automatically between personal and business um, so it'll do the math so that's, uh, that's a real handy class there. And you'll learn to use that for maybe home office expenses or automotive expenses where there's a ratio of the expense being applied to business. Now, if you have the expanded version of the Ledger program and you're subscribing to that, that means you have this extra button that says add new classes, or you can even have, you know, these two classes would show up, for example, and now you can create an income and expense statement for each individual class item that's added here. So for example, if you're tracking, if you're a landlord and you're tracking multiple properties and you wanted to have a, uh, a class for, you know, 123 Smith uh, Street and I got a rental property there, I can change that name, for example, or I can add more. And so you could have an unlimited number of properties that you could track or trucks or projects or even clients, and you could track the income and expenses associated as you would like. And it would create an income and expense statement for each one of these classes. So that's how that works, but that, remember, these extra classes you can only add if you have the expanded version of the program, but not the basic. The basic gives you the top three, which means you get one income and expense statement. Okay, now we deal with taxes. Now, when you set up the program or set up a file, I should say, you're, you're, you're going to choose, do you have one tax or two tax or no taxes to track? If you chose no taxes to track, this wouldn't show up. There'd be nothing here to do. But if you're choosing either one tax or two taxes to track, then you can choose to edit this. So if my tax rate for GST was only 5%, I just changed that to 5 and if my PST rate, you can change that. Or if the name of it is different than PST, let's say it's RST or whatever your tax is, you can change the name, you can change the tax rate, and so it'll, it'll calculate your taxes on entries. Okay. Now, the next one is we're talking about income, cost of goods sold, and expenses in the setup screen. And these are all pretty much the same, except we just split them out so it's easier for you to work with them. As you can see now with this program, you can set up main category names and also have subcategory names under each of these main category names. Okay, let me just show you under the expense tab. It's easier because it's set up already. For example, you have a main category name called automotive expenses. Under automotive expenses, you have all these other items listed here. And when you see the report, you're going to see these, these are itemized separately, but you also get an overall total for automotive expenses on the report. So this is a handy way to do it. And if you want to have more subcategories, you can mouse over this plus sign and it says add a subcategory. So you can say, does this subcategory, does it appear on a business financial statement? You would choose yes. You can put the expense name in there. 
let's say I want to do car washes as a subcategory name. And since I use my car 80% for business, I'm going to put 80 in there and uh, it'll do the, the right math when I do an entry. And normally when I get a car wash, I use my Visa card. So I'm going to choose that as my default. And if I normally would choose split because normally my car, I split it between personal and business. But if you didn't, then you just completely wanted it to be 100% business, then just choose the business category name or whatever category name it was. If it was a personal vehicle, you would just simply choose personal. And these would be the defaults that would set up on a bookkeeping entry when you choose car washes. But you can make changes on the entry. You're going to see that. And typically on a car wash, I just have one tax. And with car washes, I don't have any opening balance to be concerned about. So I'm going to choose add. And you see here we got car washes listed under automotive expenses. Now, when I go back and do an entry and I have an expense, right? And if I go down to car washes, you see how it shows the class and I can also change it if I wanted to, but it shows it for me. It shows the visa and it just a matter now of putting in the amount. So let's say it's $4. And there's one tax on that. If there's no tax, just uncheck it. You can add the receipt here with it as an image. So if you have it as a PDF or a JPEG on your computer, you can add it and it'll upload and attach itself to the entry. Now, if this was a monthly item, then of course I could choose it to be uh, repeating. But nonetheless, I'll just save this now. And you can see that it's done. So now let's go back to setup. So that's how you set up these, um, these items. And here you can see on the report, you see where car washes shows up and I already have parking and all the rest of it. And this is the total automotive expenses is listed here. I can put an entry under the main class name as well. But And then if I want to see the entries from this, I just click on it and there's my entries, right? For that particular item on the report. Anyway, let's go back to the setup screen. We have income, we have cost of goods sold and each one is set up the same. You just simply add a new item uh, as a main category name and under the main category names you can add subcategories so that's how it works for all three of these at any time you can rename these and if you delete one and there's an associated entry it won't let you do that so if car wash i have an entry now and if i wanted to try to delete that entry well it's going to stop me I'm going to have to go back and get rid of the associated entry before I can get rid of the car wash expense line. So anyway, and then finally, we have what's called descriptions. And under descriptions, we can pre-write them. So let's say, for example, I do a lot of business with X, Y, whoops, X, Y, Z Corp. And, I, and then with X, Y, Z Corp, it happens to be uh, income that I get from them and it's commission income, and I can tag it. You see, there's a tag there. So that means that anytime I choose the commission income category name, this drop down description would be available to me to choose for my description field. So let me give you, let me show you an example. And there's other ones here, as you can see, there's associated uh, pre-written descriptions and you can set them up on the fly as well. So let me show you an example. If I'm adding a record, and let's say it's income and it's commission income. Now look when I went to description field, it knows which one of those pre-written descriptions are make sense to be uh, chosen here. Uh, instead of entering the description manually each and every time, I can just choose one off the list and I can even edit it, you know, and, and put an invoice number, uh, et cetera. But you, and if I wanted to add that, to my list I could with the modified invoice number attached to it but if I don't want this to be part of my drop down I just ignore that and press tab and go to the next field anyway that's the pre-written description and you can add them on the fly or you can add them in the description in the setup area okay so let's just cancel that and let's go back to setup so there you go I think we've covered everything you have pre-written descriptions you have your three income, cost of goods sold, and expenses you can set up as you wish along with all the defaults that you would like. And you can set up your taxes, your classes, accounts, and general. All right, I hope you found that video helpful. Thanks for tuning in.